Hey, Sam. <laughs> how are you? Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. How are you doing today? Good. You sound a lot better now. How can I help? <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, I'm in baby step number two. I have my $1,000 emergency fund. Uh, my car my car was my first debt to pay off on a debt snowball. Mm-hmm. I had like 800 left on that, so I paid that off um, early. And um, I also have other loans. So I have a $2,000 loan. I have a, a $8,000 loan, a $9,000 loan, and an $11,000 loan. Um, the $11,000 loan that I have is with the same bank that uh, I took my car loan out from. And uh, since I paid off my car early, I wanted to get my title from the bank. And because I have a, a defaulted loan uh, with the same bank, uh, they they won't release my title. They're saying it's cross-collateral for that loan. Yep. Uh, and uh, the uh, debt recovery department for that bank contacted me. And they're, I guess they wanted a lump sum for the loan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't have that money right now. So they're, uh, what did they offer you? What did they offer you on the loan? Uh, he didn't offer a lower amount. He just said, um, if I could get the, uh, if I could pay the 11 grand, I asked him if I could maybe make payments on it. Um, but he said now, uh, we would have to go to court, and um, he's threatening to sue me for the eleven grand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I have no idea what to do. Uh, I'm not sure if, if. How long has it been since you paid car, on it? So, How long has it been since you paid uh, on the Three grand? years. It's been three years since I paid that loan. Mm. What's your car worth? So uh, I, my car is worth seventy five hundred. The thing is, I'm a full time Uber driver, so I need my car. I wasn't saying and get I'm, rid of it. I, I, I was just trying to figure out what's going on. Uh-huh. All right. So oh, okay. Um, okay. So, uh, what are you making? What kind? Of, what's your income? I make about four thousand a month. That's good. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, so the eleven thousand was later on in the debt snowball. That's why I wasn't planning on paying it now. I was going to take care of the next loan that was in line. Yeah. After my car. What you've run into here is what's called a dragnet clause. Um, standard uh, loan documents with the typical commercial bank. <laughs> Um, allows them, if you have a loan and it's in default, to uh, cross-collateralize and hold your collateral. I ran into that with commercial paper. It wasn't a a car loan deal, but it was something else when I was going broke. I thought I had cleared Uh this property, and I thought I was going to be able to move it and take care of something else. And I go in, and the bank's like, oh, no, we're going to keep that deed. Thank you very much. And I ran into the exact same thing. And it's pretty much an emotional gut punch because you think you're making progress, and then they take you out. So what's the name of this yeah, bank? That's what's the name I of this like. bank? Uh, it's the Hawaii State Federal Credit Union. Okay. Which is the name you need to remember the rest of your life that keeps you so pissed off you never borrow money again because you now know what it feels yeah, like I'm to be never, screwed. Right? right. I'm never borrowing any money from them ever yeah. again. This is just Or anybody much, you know? ever. Because of the way they treat ever, you. yes. Yeah, mine was called Sun Trust. Okay, so right. just to give you an idea. But anyway, the um, you just remember for thirty years you're still pissed off. You know, I mean, I'm never borrowing money again because of the way these people treat you. Um, so uh, you need to scrape up some money really fast and make them a lump sum offer, like five grand for this eleven, and see if you can discount <clears throat> and pay it off. Okay. Um, Stop everything it, and pile up cash and make them a lump sum offer. Okay. Would Would it be wise to um, possibly take out a loan for the twelve grand and pay them that and pay? It'd be wise to take loan? out a loan for seven grand and settle the settle the eleven. Okay. Because you already have an eleven thousand dollar loan. If at the end of this conversation you have a seven thousand dollar loan, we made progress. Okay. I'm not telling you to borrow money. I'm telling you to move some of your debt and make it more efficient. Right, and lower. Yeah. So right. you haven't paid on the thing in three years. The car is not uh-huh. worth seven. On a repo lot, it's not worth three. They don't want your car. It's an emotional play they've got on you. Okay. They don't really want a $3,000 car because that's what it'll bring on repo lot if it's a $7,000 car. It's not going to bring anything. So right. that is, they're not they're not going to come out of this in a good shape. So call them a, call, if you can get a loan, get that lined up, and offer them five and settle at seven, and get it in writing that that's a settlement in full. Uh huh. 
And um, what if that I do that and they're not willing to take the seven? They will. You're just going to have to mess with them a while. You're just going to have to be hardcore. Because it's been three years. Okay. Where have they been? They weren't all ex- hoppy and excited to go to a lawsuit two years ago. Why not? Right. You know? Right, right. It's just because you activated it when you called wanting your title. And they went, oh, we got this right. guy. We got this guy by yeah, the nap exactly of the neck. We're going to shake him feels. a little bit. And that, yeah, that's, that's what it feels like happened. Oh, it's exactly what happened. The yeah. borrower is slave to the lender, and you are experiencing that. I did, too. I remember this feeling. It makes me mad just hearing about it again. It's a, uh-huh. it, it gets you fired up, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, it sounds like yeah. they've got some leverage yeah. on you, and I want you to take some control back. So be in, in communication with them and say, hey, here's what I can do. Take it or leave it. I haven't paid this thing in three years. You could have seven grand today. How's that sound? And I think they're going to go, okay, we'll take it. They may not in the first conversation. They may they may mess with you a little bit. Just go, listen, when you decide you want some money, you call me. In the meantime, I'm going to be sitting over here waiting for your call. And hang okay. up. Hang up the phone. Okay. You know, cause they're, they're, I would imagine he's being rude, isn't he? Yeah, and he's not going to take, he seems like he's not going to take anything but the 12s, but that's his grand, job. You know? Don't believe that crap. It's yeah. it's just a job to him. It's not his money. Yeah, it's been really stressing me out yesterday. Oh, and by the way, listen to this. Yesterday. His job uh-huh. is to put a check mark in the box beside your name. That's it. And he can't put okay. a check mark in the box beside your name until he gets some money from you. So you got leverage over him. He needs the check mark. Okay. Dude, get some swagger right, back I'll here. I'll do that. Get some swagger back. Okay. I'll- you, yeah. This guy's. Okay. You, you ever heard the phrase "got you buffaloed"? You ever heard of that phrase? No. He's got you scared. No, but it means he's got you uh-huh. scared. He's got you cornered. He's got you thinking. He's got you whipped, and he hadn't got you whipped. He's just a duber in a cubicle making phone calls, and he needs a check mark. He works at a bank at one of the worst jobs in the bank. It's a better job to clean septic tanks than what he's doing. Uh huh. Don't let him put you in the corner, dude. Throw your shoulders back, step back up into it, punch him once, and then hang up the phone. Call me when you grow a brain, bozo. Hang up. That's what you do. Mess with them. Because that's their job. It's just a job. It's not even a good job.